بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa taala, we continuing with Zad al Mustaqna في اختصار المقنع and we're with the chapter of the author in باب الزكاة كتاب الزكاة where he says باب الزكاة بهيمة الأنعام the chapter pertaining to zaka on livestock. Bahimatul an'am, here al-ibl, wal-baqr, wal-ghanam. So bahimatul an'am, livestock, when we speak about it in the chapter of zaka, it's pertaining to camels, it's pertaining to cows and buffaloes, and it's pertaining to ghanam. Ghanam, which are sheep and lamb. Okay, sorry, sheep and goats. Wa sumiyat bithalik li anna la tatakallam, fa hiya bahimatul sawt. So bahimatul an'am, Okay, is given the name likewise of that because it doesn't speak these cattle, these camels, etc. They don't speak, so they're behemoth of salt. Okay, the author he starts with this category, may Allah have mercy upon him, because this is what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu started with the details of zakah in his letter to Anas radiallahu anhu, which is found in Sahih Bukhari. So the author is following suit, following Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. In starting with the details of Bahimatul An'am, the author, Rahimahullah Taala, he says, "Qawluhu tajibu fi iblin wa baqarin wa ghanamin." So the zakah is obligatory, as we mentioned in the ibum, the camel, the baqar, the cows and buffaloes, and the ghanam. Ghanam being sheep and uh, goats. He says, إِذَا كَانَتْ سَائِمَةً الْحَوْلْ أَوْ أَكْثَرَهُمْ So this is a condition that the author mentions that on the livestock that we've just mentioned, zakah is obligatory upon them if they are سَائِمَة for the حَوْلْ And if you remember from the previous lesson, the حَوْلْ is that you have the نِصَاب with you, the amount of wealth which zakah is obligatory upon as a, as a minimum threshold. If you, your wealth reaches that, Nisab, then it has to be with you for a whole year. Okay, so the wealth of the livestock, if it's with you at the level of the nisab, it has to be sa'imatan for a hawl. For a hawl, meaning a whole year, it has to be sa'ima. Sa'ima is that the livestock they graze the pastures freely. Okay, they graze the pastures freely for a year or close to a year. So it's not the case that they are fed by um, man's intervention. They're not fed by machines, nor are they fed by men. But rather they are sa'ima, which is that they are left to graze on open pastures, uh, not owned by anybody. So if they are fed, rather than grazing, rather than being sa'ima, if they are fed for a year or close to a year, rather than being freely grazing on pastures, then there's no zakah. So zakah is upon them if they graze for a hawl, if they are sa'ima to hawl. Also, Zakah is not upon Bahimatul Al-Am, upon this livestock that we are talking about, if they are used for amal, if they are used for work, such as plowing the fields or carrying goods, okay, or carrying water, carrying people. Uh, so Bahimatul Al-Am that do these type of jobs, they will also be exempt from Zakah. Also exempt from Zakah, from the Bahimatul Al-Am, is that which is going to be sold as trade stock, okay, that is given a different type of Zakah, it's considered as trade stock and that would come in a section which we will discuss later. So again, the zakah is obligatory upon the bahimatul an'am once it reaches the nisab, the threshold level where, whereupon zakah is obligatory on wealth and also that they are sa'imatul hawl, that they have been grazing freely on open pastures for a year or close to a year. So the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, فَيَجِبُ فِي خَمْسٍ وَعِشْرِينَ مِنَ الْإِبْلِ So zakah is going to be obligatory when you have 25 camels, بِنْتُ مَخَاد If you have 25 camels, then you will have to pay بِنْتُ مَخَاد I'm going to explain this in a minute, what بِنْتُ مَخَاد means. وَفِيمَا دُونَهَا فِي كُلِّ خَمْسٍ شَادٍ And that which is below 25 and then for every set of five camels you have to pay a share shatun shatun is a one-year-old lamb one-year-old lamb or six-month-old goat so it's either a one-year-old lamb or a six-month-old goat so for every five camels that you have you will have to pay one shirt but when they reach to 25 between 25 and 35 here you would pay a bint mukhat a female camel 
that has completed one year in age. So it's finished one year, it's a female camel and it's now in the second year. It's called Bintu Makhad because its mother, in most cases, is now pregnant. And Makhad has the meaning of the pain of contractions. Makhad has the meaning of pains of contractions. So the daughter of the Makhad, Bintu Makhad, the camel which has finished one year in age and now gone into the second year and is female, then this is the one which is going to be given. Okay. فَإِنْ لَمْ يُوجَدْ لَدَيْهِ بِنْتُ مَخَادْ If the owner of the camels, who has now 25 camels and more, between 25 to 35 camels, he has to pay بِنْتُ مَخَادْ If he cannot find the بِنْتُ مَخَادْ فَإِنَّهُ يَخْرُجْ إِبْنُ لَبُونَ ذَكَرٍ Then he can give the Ibn Labun. Okay, he can give a son of a, uh, of a camel, of a she camel that has reached the age of two. Okay, he's able to do that. If he can't find the bint al he can give the Ibn Labun in its place. So, we said that from 25 to 35, if a person has between any number between 25 to 35, he has to give bint al Now, this bracket, okay, is known as waqs. Al-waqs, singular, al-awqas, plural. Al-awqas ma bayn al-faridatayn. So al-qas is that which is between the two obligatory sets of uh, zakah. So from 25 to 35 is a set of zakah. After 35, another set of zakah payment starts. This is known as al-waqs. The author, he says, wa fi sittin wa thalathin bin tulabun. And when the camels, they reach the number of 36 upwards until 45, from 36 to 45, they need to give Bintu Labun. Bintu Labun hiya ma tamma laha sanatan. Bintu Labun is that camel, female camel, which has completed two years. So it's over two years, it's now into its third year. وَسُمِّيَتْ بِهَذَا لِأَنَّ أُمَّهَا فِي الْغَالِبِ تَكُونُ قَدْ وَضَعَتْ And it's given the name of Bintu Labun because uh, in most cases, its mother has now given birth to another camel. And therefore, she has her udders full of milk. Okay? And that's why she's given the, the name of Bint Labun, the daughter of the milk, meaning the daughter of the mother that has given birth and now she is uh, breastfeeding in the way that camels do. So again, she bint al is from sittin wa thalathin. If you have between uh, 36 to 45 camels, then you will give bint al and it is that female camel which has completed two years of age. The author, he says, wa fi sittin wa arba'in hiqqatun. And if you have a range of camels that are from uh, 46 until 60, if you have camels which are between 46 up until 60, then you will give a hiqqa, hiqqatun. al hiqqa ma tamma laha thalatha sinin. The hiqqa is the female camel which has completed three years of age. Summiat bi dhalik li anna istahaqqat an yatraqaha al fahl. It's given the name hiqqa because the stallion or the male bull now has the right to impregnate this three-year-old female camel. وَيَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهَا وَتَرْكَبْ And it can be the female camel at the age of three and above. Goods can be placed on her and she can be ridden. So it's given the name Hiqqa due to that. So if it's 36, between 36 camels until 60 camels, you have to give what is known as a Hiqqa and that is a three-year-old female camel. The author says, وَفِي إِحْدَى وَسِتِّينَ جَذَعَةٌ And between 61 camels to 75, you have to give what is known as jadha. Well, jadha ma tamma laha arba' sinin. And a jadha is that which has four years of age completed. Okay, so it's now in the fifth year. Summiat bidalik li annaha tajda'a idha saqata sinnaha. It's given that name because its teeth have now started to fall out. Okay, so in the fifth year, the teeth between the fourth and the fifth year, the, uh, the teeth of this camel have started to fall out. So between 61 to 75, you give it a jada, and that is the one which has reached the age of five. It's completed four years in age, and now it's in the fifth year. قَوْلُهُ فِي سِتِّنْ وَسَبْعِينَ بِنْتَ لَبُونَ And in, uh, six, in 76, if you have 76 camels, 
up until 90 this number of camels if you have anywhere between those amount between 76 to 90 you will get you will give binta labun you will give two bint labun bint labun you will give two of them okay as we said bint labun is the one which is two years old has has completed two years old bint labun its mother is now giving milk because she has given birth he says the author and when you have a number between 91 up until 120 you will give hiqqatan which is hiqqatun and hiqqatun you will give two hiqqa okay you will give the camels which we discussed as hiqqa you will give two of them in this range of ownership if you have camels between 91 to 120 فَإِذَا زَادَتْ عَلَى مِئَةٍ وَإِشْرِينَ وَاحِدَةٍ فَثَلَاثُ بَنَاتِ لَبُونَ If you reach 121 camels, then you will give three bint labun. Okay, you will give three banat labun, which is three bint labun. He says, ثُمَّ فِي كُلِّ أَرْبَعِينَ And thereafter, after 121, in every extra 40 camels that you have, you will give bint labun. Okay, so for every 40 beyond 121, you give bint labun wa fi kulli khamsin hiqqatun and in every 50 you would give a hiqqatun after 121 camels so just a quick uh, practice if somebody has 130 camels okay then they would have to give hiqqatun and bint labun because the hiqqatun would fit into the number between uh, 46 and 60 so we would use the hiqqatun, it fits between the bracket of 46 and 60, but we would use it as the, um, as the value of 50. Okay, so if you have 130 camels, we're going to give hiqqatun, and that covers 50 camels. And then what's left is we have to give binta labun, two bint labun, and that would cover 40 and 40. Altogether, that would cover the zakah for 130 camels. If we had 140 camels, we will give hiqqatan and bint labun. We will give two hiqqa, okay, because that would cover 50 and 50, and the bint labun would cover 40. If we had, for example, jump all the way up to 200 camels, we would give four hiqqa, okay? We would give four hiqqa, or you could give five bint labun. And the sahib al-mal, mukhayr fi dalik. The one who owns the camels has the choice whether he wants to give four hiqqa to equate what is owed for the 200 camels or he can give five bint labun to equate what is owed for the four camels. Okay, because here he's at a number where he can use either. He can use either uh, four hiqqa or he can use khamsa bint labun if he wants to do so to cover what is required for 200 camels in this example. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Salam al Shawair, he mentions in his explanation of this text that the qima, that the value can be given for the camels rather than taking the hiqqa or the bint labun or the jada, etc. Right? So rather than giving from the flock or the herd of the camels, the physical camel, what you can do, you can work out the value of what this camel would be worth on the market, the one that I have to give in zakah, and you can give the value for that instead. Okay, so this is a minority opinion in the madhab. It's against the mashur opinion. It's against the famous opinion in the madhab. But he said, uh, Hafidhullah, that this is what the fatwa is upon at the moment in Saudi Arabia, that you can give the qima, you can give the value of the camel rather than the physical camel itself. The author, he moves on and he says, Faslun fi zakat al baqar Section pertaining to zakah of the baqar. Al-Baqar min Bahimat al-An'am So Baqar is again from the category of livestock Bahimat al-An'am Summiyat bi dhalik It's given that name لِأَنَّهَا تَبَقَّرَ الْأَرْضِ بِالْحَرَاثَ Because it breaks up the earth when it plows Okay, Tabakkar al-Ard Breaking up the earth when it plows <coughs> The details of Zakat for Baqar are not found in the letter of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu which we mentioned before which details Zakat to Anas radiallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari the reason for that that I mention is because Baqar it was hardly found in the Hijaz, okay, in the Arabian Peninsula. It was hardly found, but rather the details were given uh, by the Prophet Muhammad when he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu to Yemen. 
as mentioned by Sheikh Sami ibn Abd al-Rahman. وَيَجِبُ فِي ثَلَاثِينَ مِنَ الْبَقَرِ تَبِيعٌ أَوْ تَبِيعَةٌ It's obligatory to pay if a person has 30 cows or 30 buffaloes. So if he has between the number 30 or 39 uh, cows, anything between this 30 and 39, this waqs, then he has to pay what is known as a tabi'un, the male, or the tabi'atun, the female. وَالْتَبِيعُ أَوْ تَبِيعَةُ مَا تَمَّ لَهَا سَنَّةٌ مِنَ الْبَقَرِ So this is the tabi'un أو tabi'atun is that which has completed a year in age from amongst the cows or buffaloes, okay? And they are given this name, tabi'a, tatba' from the meaning of tatba' because they follow their mother around at this age. They follow their mother around. <coughs> Excuse me, the author, he says, وَفِي أَرْبَعِينَ مُسِنَّةٌ And when you reach 40 cam uh, cows or buffaloes, you have to give musinna. Musinna هِيَ مَا تَمَّ لَهَا سَنَّةً مِنَ الْبَقَرِ Musinna is that which has completed two years from amongst the cows. وَلَا يَدْزِي مُسِنُّ ذَكَرِ And in, in this case, you cannot give a masculine instead of the feminine. Before, we just mentioned just now, we mentioned tabi'un أو tabi'atun, right? That you can give the, uh, the masculine or the female. But in this situation, when you reach 40, you have to give musinnatun. Okay, the two-year-old, the one which has completed two years in age, and is now three years. Uh, this one, you have to give it as masculine. And it's given the name musinnatun li ziyadati sinniha, because its teeth have started to increase in number. Okay? <coughs> the author, he says, ثُمَّ فِي كُلِّ ثَلَاثِينَ تَبِيعٌ وَفِي كُلِّ أَرْبَعِينَ مُسِنَّةٌ Then after this number of 40, okay, for each extra 30 cows that you have, you will give another tabi'un, okay? And in every uh, 40 above the number, above the number 40, you will give musinnatun, you will give a musinna. So every time you have 30, so again, we said at 40, you have to give musinnatun, right? So now, every 30, above the 40, every group of 30 cows above the 40, you have to give a tabi'un or tabi'atun. And in every group of 40, you have to give musinnatun. You have to give musinnatun. طيب. So, just quick review of this, of the cows. Between 30 and 40, you will give tabi'un or tabi'atun. You will give a tabi' or the female version of that, which is the tabi'atun. That's between 30 and 40. Between 40 and 60, you would give musinnatun, right? The one that has completed two years, gone into the third year, and now its teeth are increasing. This is between the category of 30 to 60. You would give a musinnatun. Between 60 and 69, you would either give two tabi' male, or you would give tabi'atani, which is two of the tabi'atun the female ones or you can give one of each you can give one male and you can give one female between 70 and 79 you will give musinnatun wa tabi'atun okay you would give a musinna and a tabi'a whether that tabi'a is male or female okay because that would cover 40 and that would cover 30 right which is 70 right yeah, so between 70 and 79, you have to give musinnatun wa tabi'un. Tayyib. That's that. Let's keep it simple, inshallah. And the author, he says, wa yudzi'u dhakaru huna. And he said, you can give a masculine, uh, a masculine cow in this situation. Uh, some points that you mention here. الأصل في زكاة بهيمة الأنعام أن تخرج أنثى. The أصل, the foundation principle when giving the zakah of بهيمة الأنعام is that you give from the female of the camels or the female of the cows or the female of the sheep and the goats. لأن المقصود الدر والنسل because the objective from giving this zakah to the poor is that they are now able to breed these female livestock and that will grow for the poor person. وهذا يكون في الإناث. Okay, so this is found in the female. بخلاف الضحايا التي مقصودها الأكل. Opposite to the udhiyah, which its objective is to eat. فإن ذكر فيها أفضل من الأنثى. 
for verily then in the sacrifice of Udhiyya or Eid al-Adha the masculine is better to give rather than the female okay so the asal is that you give the female the foundation principle in the zakah is that it's better for you or you should give the female however there are exceptions إِلَّا أَنَّ ذَكَ فِي زَكَاتُ بِهِمُتِ الْأَنْعَامِ يَجْزِي فِي مَوَادِعِ Except that the masculine livestock is sufficient in a few areas and I'm going to mention those now. تَبِيعَ So if you have ثَلَثِينَ مِنَ الْبَقَرِ If you have 30 cows فَيَجْزِي تَبِيعٌ أَوْ تَبِيعَةٌ Then you can either give a tabi' or you can give a tabi'atun. You can give the masculine or you could give the female. Okay, li warud al nasbihi because there's evidence pertaining to that. Waqawluhu ibn labun makan bint maqad. Or you can give an ibn labun pertaining to the camels. You can give an ibn labun, uh, the one whose mother is now milking, instead of, instead of the bint maqad. Ida wajabat bint maqad wa lam takun indahu falahu an yakhruj makana ibn labun. So if a person, he has the uh, amount of camels whereby it's upon him to give a bint makhad, but he cannot find the bint makhad. So in this situation, it's permissible for him instead to give ibn labun. It's permissible for him to give the son uh, of the camel, uh, which is known as ibn labun. Okay? So the masculine can be given instead of the feminine in this situation also. And also as a third situation, وَإِذَا كَانَ نِسَابْ كُلُّهُمْ ذُكُورًا If all of the livestock happen to be, what? If all of the livestock happen to be uh, masculine, then of course in this situation, he can give uh, from that, from uh, those animals. And he doesn't have to go and purchase a female animal. إِذَا كَانَ نِسَابْ مُزَكَّ كُلُّهُ ذُكُورًا سَوَاءً كَانَ بَقْرًا أَوْ غَلَمًا أَوْ إِبْلًا فَإِنَّهُ يَخْرُجُ زَكَاةً ذَكْرًا مِنْهَا وَلَا يُكَلَّفْ مِنْ غَيْرِ مَالِهِ Yes, as we just said. فَاصْنُ فِي زِكَاةِ الْغَنَمْ The author, he moves on to the section pertaining to the zakah of the ghanam. The zakah of the ghanam. Ghanam is basically sheep and goats. سُمِّيَةَ الْغَنَمْ بِهَذَا لِأَنَّهَا it's given the name of ghanim because it doesn't have the ability or the tools to defend itself, right? The goat or the, the sheep don't have the ability to defend itself from predators. Therefore, it's a ghanima, a ghanim and a ghanima. It's a ghanima for everybody that seeks it. It's a booty or bounty for everybody that seeks it. It can't defend itself. So anybody can easily take it or be a predator upon it. So it's called ghanim. From that meaning of ghanima that I just explained. وَقَوْلُهُ تَجِبُ فِي أَرْبَعِينَ مِنَ الْغَنَمْ شَاتٌ So from أَرْبَعِينَ, if you have 40 ghanim, then you have to give the shaatun. Okay? So between the bracket of 40 and 120 sheep or goats, you have, you have to give the shaat. وَالشَّاتُ تَطْلُقْ عَلَىٰ أَمْرَيْنِ and we mentioned this in passing before, but we're going to give just a bit more detail on this. Shaat, what is the word shaat? Shaat comes under two meanings or two categories. The first of them, jadha da'an. Jad, jadha da'an. Okay, jadha da'an. Which is, wa huwa ma tamma lahu sitatu ashur. Okay, from the sheep, a lamb, which is six months and above. And the second meaning of this word, shatun, thaniyul ma'as, wa huwa ma tamma lahu sanna. From the goats, that which has uh, reached the age of a year and above. فَكُلُّهُ يَجْزِي فِي الزَّكَاءِ So all of these, whether it's from the, uh, the, the lamb or whether it's from the goats, these are all permissible to give in the zakah. وَضَعْنُ يُرَاد بِهَا أو وَضَعْنُ يُرَاد بِهِ ذَا صُوف مِنَ الْغَنَمْ And ضَعْن, what is intended by it specifically, is the one which has fur, so pertaining to the sheep. So this word ghanam, under it in the, with the Arabs, comes sheep and goats. Now he's given a bit more, the, the, the Sheikh uh, Mansur Saqaub, whose explanation I'm reading, he's given a bit more explanation. He said, ba'an, what's meant by it is that which has fur, which probably means lamb and sheep, right? Well, ma'as, the sha'ar min al ghanam. And ma'as, the goat, is that which has hair, okay, from the ghanam. So the author, he said, that when you reach 40, between 40 and 120, you have to give a shatun. وَفِي مِئَةِ وَإِحْدَ وَعِشْرِينَ And when you reach 121, up until 200, you have to give two shat, shatan. 
Okay, you have to give two shahd. وَفِي مِئَتَيْنْ وَوَاحِدَةٍ ثَلَاثُ شِيَاءٍ And when you reach 201, up until 399, غَنَمْ Then you have to give three shi'a, three shatun. Okay, you have to give three shi'a. ثُمَّ فِي كُلِّ مِئَةٍ شَاتٌ And thereafter, that number that we just mentioned, every hundred above 399, you have to give an extra shatun. Okay, بَعْدَ ذَلِكْ تَسْتَقِرُ الْفَرِيدَ so after this number, okay, uh, after 399, for every 100, you give a shatun. So the faridah, the obligation of zakat is now fixed. It's just 100 and 100. Uh, it's just an extra shat for uh, every 100 above 399. Okay? Um, so that's uh, not, just, just to confirm, is it 299 or is it 399? Uh, the, la the, the, uh, the, the last bracket we mentioned wa fi right 201 up until 399 you have to give three shia now now every time you have above 399 a group of 100 you just add on an extra shatun tayyib um yeah so he gives an example for so when you have 300 you give three shia so from 300 from 400 to 499 you will give four shia and from 500 to 599 you will give that's an example the author gave Sheikh Mansur Saqoo um, the author now, he's moved on from talking about very briefly about the zakat of the livestock. He's now going to talk about another matter which pertains to the livestock, which is known as a khulta. A khulta is a type of partnership which is found in people who have livestock. So the author, he says, So khulta, this partnership, its impact on livestock for, that belong to two different people is that it makes it as though it's one group of livestock, right? So we'll make this clearer with some examples. Al-khultatu fi bihaymat al-an'am naw'an. Khulta in the livestock is of two types. The first of them is khultatu a'yan wa shtiraq. Khultatu a'yan wa shtiraq. What is this? Wa hiya an yakun al-mal nafsuhu mushtarikan bayna ithnayn. It is that this livestock is owned by two people. Okay, this livestock, wherever amount it be, it's owned by two people. However, the amount of livestock that one person owns and the other person owns is not clearly divided, is not clearly labeled. So they each know how much they own, but it's mixed to the extent that it's not clearly known whose 40 is this and whose 40 is that. So if there's 80 of a particular livestock, and two people own them, maybe... Actually, let me read the, uh, the, uh, the Sheikh's example. مثال وأغنام ورثها زيد وعمر So, you have غنم that has been inherited by Zayd and Amru. فلأحدهم نصفها So, one of them have half of it. ولثاني نصفها ولم يميز And for the other, there is the other half and there's no distinction between them. So again, uh, let's take any number, 80. Two, two brothers, they have inherited 80 livestock and uh, one has 40 and the other one has 40. However, the livestock themselves as a group of 40 and 40 is not distinguishable. They're all mixed together as livestock. This is what is known as khultatul uh, a'yan wa ishtiraq. The other type of khulta, the other type of partnership in livestock is as follows. Khultatu awsaf wa jiwar. And in this situation, the khulta, the livestock which is mixed, each owner knows exactly what his portion of the livestock is, okay? Not in terms of number, because that's in both cases, but in terms of being able to separate his livestock if he wanted to do so from the other person's livestock. So he's able to identify his group from within from within the group of livestock as a whole فلهذا مثلا 30 بعيرا وللاخر 30 بعيرا كلها مخلوطه وتشترك في امور خمسه so the people who own this livestock in khulta to awsaf wal jiwar their livestock is mixed but they're able to distinguish each person's livestock 
So this type of partnership, it's based upon five issues. Okay, it takes place if there's five issues which are present. The first of them is that they must be joining in the matter of marah. Marah is makan al mabit, fatakun al tabitu jamian. The marah is the place where they all um, gather for the night and they rest for the night. Okay. So both sets of livestock belonging to each person, they have to gather in one place for the night and they have to rest together in that place. That's the first from amongst the five things that must be present for khulta to awsaf and jiwar to be established. The second of them is al-masrah. فَيَسْرَحْنَا جَمِيعًا فِي وَقْتٍ وَاحِدٍ وَيَوْمٍ وَاحِدٍ that they leave together to go to the pastures from one particular place, okay? أَيْ فِي مَكَانَ الَّذِي تَجْتَمِعْ فِيهِ that they leave from one particular place to go out and uh, graze the pastures. وَالْمَرْعَى يَكُونُ مَكَانَ الْمَرْعَى وَاحِدٍ وَفِي جِهَةٍ وَاحِدٍ and the pastures that they are going to go to are one pasture, it's a shared pasture, okay? Uh, and in one direction. وَالْفَحْل the fourth of these conditions or these factors that have to be there is the fahl that the, the stallion or the bull that is going to impregnate the females is uh, one bull shared amongst both groups of livestock okay uh, and the last of these matters is al mahlab that the place of milking these uh, livestock is one place okay so if you have these then you will have khultatul awsaf wal jiwar now the author is going to mention or actually the Sheikh Mansul Saqib, he mentions that there's some other conditions which are uh, important. So the first five that I mentioned were factors for the Khulta uh, Jiwar to take place, right? But now there's some shurut, there's some conditions that have to be there. Lakin yashtaritu li kawni al-khulta mu'athratun iddata shurut. In order for the Khulta to be valid, the Khulta al-Jiwar that we just mentioned to be valid, the following conditions have to be there. And takun al khulta fi bahimat al an'am. That the khulta of both types, okay, that we mentioned, it can only take place in bahimat al an'am. This partnership only takes place in livestock, okay? Falatu athr al khulta fi ghayriha. So it doesn't have an effect in other than livestock. The second of these conditions, and yablug majmu al khalitain nisab. That both people that own these livestock, their groups of livestock, when it comes together, they must reach the nisab level, okay? The level of nisab must be reached when this livestock is mixed. And you'll understand why in, in, an, in a few moments uh, when other points are mentioned. Uh, the third condition, and يَسْتَمِلْ الْخُلْتْ فِي جَمِيلْ حَوْلْ That this mixing of the livestock should be there for the hawl, the complete hawl for the whole year. طيب. The fourth condition, أَلَّا تَكُونَ الْخُلْتَ فِرَارًا مِنَ zakah. That this khulta is not done in order to escape the zakah. وَلَا تَشْتَرِتُ نِيَةِ الْخُلْتَ And the niyyah of khulta is not conditional. Meaning that the owners who own this livestock is not a condition that they had the intention for this khulta. فَلَوْ خُلِتَتْ بِفِعْلِ رَائِ أُثِرَتْ So, the, the shepherd, if he was the one that did this, if he was the one that mixed the livestock, then the effects and the validity of the khulta will take place. So it's not upon the owners that they have to have the intention. It's enough that the shepherd, he gathers them together in the way that we mentioned for the khulta to be effective. And the fifth of them, and يَقُونَ الْخْرِيطَانِ مِنْ أَهْلِ وَالْجُوبِ الزَّكَاءِ That these two partners, that they should be from those whose zakah is wajib upon them. فَلَوْ كَانَتَ الْخُلْتَ بَيْنَ كَافِرْ وَمَكَاتِبْ فَلَا أَثَرْ لَهَا لِأَنَّهُ لَا زَكَاتْ فِي مَالِهِمَا So if it be the case that one of these partners, one of these khul, uh, khalit is a kafir and the other one is a mukatib, the slave that is trying to purchase himself from his master, then both of these, the khulta wouldn't be effective for them because in asl, in foundation, there's no zakah upon them in the first place. There's no zakah upon their wealth. طيب, Sheikh uh, Mansour Saqib, he says, قَدْ يَكُونُ لِلْخُلْتَةِ أَثْرٌ فِي إِنْقَاسِ zakah." At times, khulta, this partnership, it has the effect of decreasing the zakah. Okay? How? He gives an example. He says, مِثَالُهُ زَيْدٌ وَعَمْرٌ كُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا إِنْدَهُ أَرْبَعُونَ شَادٍ He said, you have two people, you have Zayd and Umar. Each one of them has 40 sheep. 
فلما حصل لهم الخلطة صار عليهم جميعا شاد so when this khulta came that they mixed their lives up together okay all they had to pay in zakah was one sheep right one shirt why because the khulta now is 80 the khulta is 80 question to yourselves what would have been the zakah on if they had kept their sheep separate if they have kept it Zaid kept his as 40 and Amru kept his as 40 what would the zakah be on these two if they had not made khulta One sheep uh, each. Barakallahu so feek. Two, two in total. Exactly. So here there would have been two sheep in total. However, we said that the khulta at times makes in qas, makes the zakah less in value, right? So here you find that because the sheep together, not 40-40 come together, became 80, what's wajib upon them here is only one sheep. Because between 40 and 120 sheep in this category, only one sheep is due. So here we have in qas of the amount of zakah. He says the Shaykh, وَقَدْ يَكُونْ لَهَا أَثْرٌ فِي إِجَابِ زَكَاءِ Okay, and also this khulta at times, it has the, uh, the effect, the athar of causing the zakah to be obligatory. Okay, so without this khulta, maybe the zakah wasn't going to be obligatory. But with the khulta present, the zakah is going to be obligatory. How? Let's look at the mithal. He says, زَيْدٌ إِنْدَهُ إِشْرُونَ شَاتْ Zayd has 20 shat. وَعَمْرُ إِنْدَهُ إِشْرُونَ شَاتْ And Amru also has 20. فَلَمَّا اخْتَلَطَ وَجَابَتْ عَلَيْهِمَا الزَّكَاةِ وَهَكَذَا So individually 20, there's no zakah upon 20 from amongst the sheep, right? But put them together, they become 40. Now the zakah becomes wajib due to the khulta. So khulta has certain effects uh, that wouldn't be there if uh, it wasn't there. طيب, the next part is going to be speaking about in the chapter is بَابْ زَكَاةِ الْحَبُوبُ وَالثِّمَارِ I think we'll stop there, stop here today, uh, rather than moving on to the next section, because it's good to go back and to review these details, the details for the camels, the details for the cows and buffaloes, and the details for the ghanam, inshallah, and just to get a better understanding of that, inshallah. If you have any questions pertaining to what I mentioned today, uh, feel free to ask. If not, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you immensely for your time and effort. And anything which was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and Shaytan. Wa jazakumullahu khayra.